Hey friend, Jacopo here. I'm very excited about this episode because this is the culmination of what happened after one and a half years of tweaking our business because it was stressing us out so bad. But now we finally find a situation where we are still earning 10 to 30K a month without a team and only working three hours a day. And I wanna give you the full breakdown so that you can apply the same method and maybe simplify your business if you find yourself stressed out and too stretched. I want you to have a business that fuels your life and not the other way around. So let's start. This video is not for people that have never sold anything online yet, never sold anything in person and they're just starting out. This video might not be too helpful to you because it's advanced stuff. You can still watch it and get value from it, but it's definitely not tailored to beginners. Also, it's not for pure marketers. There's nothing wrong with marketing and there's nothing wrong with being a pure marketer, meaning being focused on the tactics and the funnels and the ROI and the split testing and all the technical side of making money online. If this is your focus right now, there's nothing wrong with it, but this video is not gonna be helpful to you. This video is more for people that I call new era creators which means people that are creating content online but are tired of growing an audience just for the sake of growing an audience, that want a lifestyle business with more time for family, friends and traveling, not for people that would do whatever it takes to grow the business, which is nothing wrong with that. Again, this, is, this was us for the past years, but we changed perspective and this video is going to be incredibly helpful for all of the creators out there that are feeling burned out, stretched out, they don't know how to focus and how to simplify a business to make it scale, but not only that, to get profit that allows you to have enough margins to give amazing service for your clients, but also it's not going to stress you out and give you a free calendar. So if you're ready for this, I'm super excited about it. Let me take you back. Let me take you back to 2021. After working on our online business for such a long time, we finally saw some momentum and we were just riding the wave of what we've built for the past years. We were crushing it. We moved to Italy, we rented a bigger house, we bought a Porsche. We were working like crazy, but we were crushing it. We were making 30 to 40K a month every single month. Our YouTube channel was blooming. We were growing, we were, I think, slightly below 200,000 subscribers or something like that. We had a team of people helping us out with video editing, with scripting, with copywriting, with web designing and, web and graphic design as well as social media management as well. Alessia and I came from very stressful career, so working hard wasn't a problem, or at least we never really questioned that working hard was a problem. So we kept on going like this because we wanted to grow this business no matter what. I was constantly listening to podcasts, learning from books, discussing with coaches, and at some point I said, okay, I wanna double our business. I think I've reached the glass ceiling. I don't know how we can do things differently. We need to be in the same room with people that are doing better than us. So we find our mentor. Ground Cochrane and Ground Cochrane had courses and a community, but we really wanted to be in the same room with people that were making multiple six figures, seven figures a year. We decided to join the mastermind. It was like a 15 grand a year to be in a group of 11 people in the same Zoom room, a virtual room together, sharing our insights, sharing hot seats, giving each other feedback. And I have to say, it was one of the best experience of our lives. We were finally in a room where we felt the most stupid ones. Every time we jumped on a call, we felt excited because we were going to learn something. We stayed in the mastermind for a little bit more than a year. And every time we would have our hot seat, we would ask for different tactics for marketing and sales, tweaks that we could implement in our business. And they all gave us feedback and we implemented things along the way. The beautiful thing was that we were supported along the way from people that were doing something that completely different from us, but with the same model. So they were growing organically on social media and selling digital products or online services like coaching as well. After about a year 
working with this group of people and implementing and actually growing our business as well, there was something on the back of my head that said, okay, this was really helping in terms of mindset, in terms of feeling supported, but how do we 5X this thing? How do we 10X this thing? It's always nice to be on the dials and change headlines, change the funnels, change the tactics and see like a 10% improvement, 5% uh, improvement, but it wasn't really substantial because we were really working like crazy to make this thing work. It really didn't matter what we did. It was never like a substantial leap in terms of growth. So I think it was one of our last hot seats where we asked the group, guys, how do we even double what we're doing? So we presented all of the numbers, all of the things that we've put into place since we started the mastermind. And frankly, people were quite impressed with what we've done. Many of them didn't even know about the tactics that we, we used and they thought we were really clever on trying all of this, but they couldn't come up with anything substantial to tell us on how to 2X what we had. After everyone else said something, Graham stepped in and said, Guys, let's have a look at your numbers. So in terms of output, if you want this amount of output, I guess the goal that we set was that to double it at least, to double our business that year. He said, well, I need you to have at least three, four times your opt-in rates in your email list, which of course it meant more content, more funnels, more, four times more what we were doing already. And it made sense, complete sense. If you want math to work on paper, you, you know your output, you've got to make your input work for that as well. So yeah, as simple as that, you just need to quadruple your effort and, and, and leverage what you can, maybe hiring more team, maybe use paid ads. So that was a valid point. I remember smiling at the group and uh, telling them, sure, that's, we're going to work on it and this is what we have to do. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll work on it and let you know and report back. But in, in my heart, I felt like that was the end of the road for me. My heart literally sunk on that hot seat. When we closed the call, I remember Alessia and I looked at each other without saying anything because we didn't need to. We, we stood up from the chair, we hugged each other, and I remember not closing my eyes to really fall into the hug. I was tense, I was rigid. I was staring at the blank wall because my brain was already trying to look for how we're gonna do this. But at the same time, deep inside me, I knew I didn't wanna do this. I didn't wanna increase my input. I didn't wanna forex our efforts. You see, we were going at 150%, 200% for years to get to the level that we were at the moment. And just hearing somebody with more experience and better results than us telling us, guys, you need more input. You need to do more. For us, it was a wake up call. At the beginning, we took it badly. It's like somebody stole our toys or something. We started arguing with each other and I fell back home, meaning what do we know how to do best? create content, create promotions, create funnels, and pretty much doing the same exact things that we were been doing so far, just doing over and over again. Just hoping that maybe one funnel, one, another funnel, another offer will be the killer one. We're gonna crush it. We're gonna two exit next time. But Alessia was probably one of the most discouraged between the two of us because she knew that no matter how much effort she would put into the videos, they would always perform the same way. We reached the limit of what our audience wanted from us and what we could expect from our audience for our niche and every niche is different. But deep inside our hearts, we knew that it just didn't matter how much more we would do. So that was the moment we had to deal with the decision of changing what we were doing. Alessia started to bring up the point, can I stop doing videos then? So it doesn't matter how many I do every week, we always get the same results. Can I stop doing that? I'm like, are you crazy? If we stop doing all of that, you are killing our business. This is what we signed up for, remember? And we were just going on and on with these arguments all the time and our relationship started deteriorating because of that. 
at the end of the day, we we built it together. So I was just trying to do what, what was best for the business. And Alessia was trying to make me realize that we didn't sign up for all of this pain and frustration. We signed up for a better life, for a life where we had more time. Sure, we had more money, but we could also afford to do the things that we couldn't do when we were into our careers. Travel more, enjoy our life, be more close to friends and family, support them and help the people that we really want to help. We were still not able to do that because we were so busy managing the team, working on promotions or content all the time. It was exhausting and it took us a good two years to realize that we really had to radically change our life, our business as well. About one year ago, I feel like Alessia and I had the final argument. I was finally realizing that things had to radically change. And if you follow, if you followed me for a while, I'm, I'm the 80, 20 guy. I don't want to do something that is halfway through the solution. I want to have a solution that I work for 20% and it gives me 80% of the results. So I was looking for the ultimate solution. And I said, right, I think we looked at this completely in the wrong way. We were too busy focusing on what would make the business grow without realizing that we did not design a life for ourselves. Let's do that. Let's sit down and decide what we want. Yes, we moved in the country we want. Yes, we have a bigger house. Yes, we have a freaking Porsche. But why are we so unhappy? Well, let, if you don't know exactly what we want because you, on paper, we've got everything we wanted. Let's start with the things that we don't want. Okay, so what do we don't want? We don't want to create videos every single week that are just for the masses, that need to please people, they need to be engaging, so we need to pretty much do the dancing monkey, almost literally, <laughs> to please them and get more views and get more opt-ins. We don't want to do that anymore. Second, honestly, we don't, we don't want a team anymore. A team is incredibly valuable if you want to leverage your time but building a team is a skill on itself that at the moment with the profit margins that we've had so far, we decided there was a lot of expenses for not a lot of out output. So, you know what? I, let's design a business that works just with the two of us. Great. How do we stop creating offers every single month? Our business became this spaghetti monster of offers that we somehow had to connect together. So how do we stop doing that all together? And so naturally, how do we hustle and grind less? Because honestly, I don't want to hustle and grind anymore. I think we've done a lot. Since 2016, we gave it our all to grow a YouTube channel and please people. We've been people pleasers for such a long time. And I'm sure if you're an online creator, you, do, you create content, you know what I'm talking about. You want to grow your channel, your social media presence. It takes a lot of your soul, especially because you're not doing the things that you really are passionate about, because you've got to follow the algorithm rules, the trends and all of that, which is what we've been doing for such a long time. We decided no more. But what we surely wanted to keep was the profit. We wanted to keep a very high income because that's the life that we want. We want to never be afraid about losing money or not having enough money. So we definitely want to have a very good profit at the end of the month without the stress of selling every single month. So this is what we want. How do we design a business that would make this type of life possible? So we came up with radical decisions. We said it's, it's useless that we do 20% less to have 50% less of results. Let's try and do 90% less and keep 60% of the results. So we started saying, okay, no more new videos. So we don't need all these cameras, all of these lights around. Let's start getting rid of them. So we made a decision and we act on the reality we, we were living. I don't need a huge 24 inches monitor to edit videos constantly. Why don't we get rid of that and replace it with a laptop? We did that. If we're not making engaging and almost ADHD based videos for people that cannot concentrate for more than three seconds, 
We don't even need to send the most complicated videos to our editors, which were amazing, by the way. We can save some money, and also, I don't want to spend time editing them anyway, so they're going to be made in a very, very simple way. If we don't want to create funnels every single month, what do we do? Well, we just market in a different way, in a way that people need to be in our list to be marketed. So we created one opt-in page for every single campaign we wanted to do. What do we do with these multiple offers that we have scattered around? Let's kill them. We kill them all, we remove them from our shop, we stop promoting this one or that one, and we concentrate on our North Star, which is our core product. Okay, so it's, the more we were doing these radical changes in our business, the more we felt lighter. It, it felt like a weight from our shoulder was lifted. As bad as it felt letting people go from our team because we, we, they stayed with us for years. Definitely wasn't easy letting them go, but for us it was a rebirth. It was a rebirth in a way that we didn't have to work as much to get what we want. Finally, our business was working for us instead of us working for it. It felt so freeing that I could double down on this coaching business because I wanted to help other people achieve the same amount of freedom, but still gaining huge amount of a profit because of how simple and streamlined the business can become. Then after a while, it became weird because I started asking myself, should I be working right now? I feel like I'm not doing much, but there's nothing to be done. Am I, am I weird if I feel the need to work? So I need to hire a mindset coach to tell me that it's okay to not work. This is how stressed out I was before, constantly in grinding and hustling mode. And that had to stop. But I want to go deeper into the main decisions we made and how you can tweak maybe your business and start making this simplifying journey for yourself as well. And we came up with three main pillars. Our method is three main pillars. And let's go deeper. Let's unpack our method so that I can show you exactly what we did, what we did before and how we changed it. I'm gonna jump on my laptop for that. If you resonated with my story so far, let's go deeper into the method. Like how, what, what was the thing that actually allowed us to create this lifestyle and the business that fuels it. Let's start unpacking each pillar so that you can recognize maybe something you're doing right now and choose to shift towards the new way of doing things to free up your time and put back the fun back into business, right? Let's do it. Pillar number one is called discovery. Discovery is basically the way you make people discover you. It's in our case was YouTube, you, the YouTube channel that we use to grow our online presence and at the end we focus everything on that. It's always good to focus on one platform at the beginning and just give it a, your all. But now we want to see what the old way compares to the new way because surely we did many mistakes and you want to learn from those. So let's have a look at the old way of getting discovered and grow a social media profile. The old way is focusing on vanity metrics the subscribers, the views, the watch time, the followers, all of the things that you can see in numbers fashion. Like you can see the numbers growing and your ego gets fed. And I tell you for experience, we did that at the beginning. That's, that's entirely our plan. At the beginning we thought, well, let's grow a YouTube channel so big that we'll get to millions and whenever we'll have something for sale, people will jump on it. And there are some problems with it. And I think in 2024, 2025, there's been a shift in many creators realizing that this method, this way of thinking is not sustainable anymore. And the reason is because in order to grow on a social media platform like crazy, you need to create general type of content. We started creating videos that could be appealing to, um, to adult dancers, for example. Because the YouTube algorithm pushes you, if you appeal to a wide range of people, you need to be more general and you need to be trendy. If you follow a trend, YouTube is more likely to push your content to other people that might like the same thing. Then the side effect is that if you wanna grab the attention of the general public, 
You need to be really sophisticated in the way you create your videos. You need to have lots of B-rolls. You need to have engagement, entertainment. And you could do that for an extended amount of time. We've done it for many years. Without missing a date, we've been publishing one video a week since 2016. And I can tell you, pleasing the masses is the biggest grave you can dig for yourself. What is the outcome of you doing it the old way? The outcome is, yes, you grow your vanity metrics. If you follow that path, that checklist, you will grow your channel. Congratulations. Um, but you'll be stuck in content creation. And because this stuff is very hard to produce, to design, you'll need help with people, you need to grow a team, it will burn you out and at some point it will overwhelm you because you run out of ideas. You will need other people telling you what to do. Then once you know what to do, you need to put it in place and produce it. It's a mess. It's not sustainable. And one of the biggest thing we realized only a few years along the way, we are growing a generation of people that are getting used to getting stuff for free. Now there's nothing wrong with free stuff, but if every day of your life, it's spent trying to please people for free, giving as much value as you can, at some point you will feel abused. And I remember a few months ago, Alessia started looking at the comments from the YouTube channel and after uploading more than 500 videos on the channel, receiving comments of people not happy about the routine that she were doing, maybe not happy about the most silly things like I don't like the tone of your voice. You, you could definitely feel that you, you've been spoiling people. You've been spoiling your audience. And how is that gonna make you feel? After you pour all your heart and soul into a channel based on giving out value in, in order to help other people, maybe fix a problem, maybe learn a new skill, receiving comments because it's never going to be enough. Sure, growing a big audience makes us a lot of money. We made a multiple six figure a year with this specific content strategy, but I wanna give you some perspective. We have 220 something thousand subscribers on the YouTube channel. Then if I count all of the online students from all over the world that we've had, it's about 7,000, 8,000 people total, which is a great number. But if you compare it to the 220 something thousand, it's not even 4%. 4% of people only have bought our products, have, they became members of our membership. Everybody else is taking advantage, taking advantage of the free stuff because there's so much of it. And I don't know, I don't know you, but um, I don't think it's worth focusing on vanity metrics just because the one, two, three percent of the big audience that you are dreaming of growing is gonna finally give you money. This is how we started. I don't recommend you do it because it's gonna burn you out. We surely got burnt out a few times and here I am trying to give you the cure. The new way to build a brand online is not looking for vanity metrics, is to look for resonance, relatability, deepening your relationships with your audience and just being authentic, being who you are without pretending or maybe overdoing it or always trying to chase and please people. After growing a YouTube channel to 220 something thousand subscribers, I know all the rules of the game. I know how the algorithm works. I know what the best thumbnail, the title, and how to produce a video that it's engaging, but it's also ex exhausting. And sometimes I need to feel like I'm unlearning the things that I know in order to be myself, to allow myself to be ge genuine and just talk from the heart. And I don't need to have a million cameras with different B-rolls because the people that I want to attract, specifically on this video, for example, I want them to be, I want you to be able to focus for 20 minutes without having a new, a dopamine hit to hit you. Like if you are not able to concentrate, you're not the people I wanna to talk to and that's okay. So this was a big shift for us. But what does it mean to really looking for resonance for deepening relationships? 
let's be practical for a second. So let's define your dream client. Your dream client is basically the person that you want to talk to. At the beginning, we were trying to cater to a wide range of people. Um, 90% of them probably were not our ideal client, were people that were expected stuff for free, that didn't have much money, that they would not pay much for a lot of services or products. So if you're trying to speak to everybody because you're afraid of limiting your market, there's nothing further from the truth. Once you decide only to speak to your ideal client, to your dream clients, you know what I'm talking about. The people that when you talk to them, they're already sold on everything that you have to offer. They pay in full, they are self-reliant, they don't need hand-holding, they grab the golden nuggets that you can give them, they run with it and then come back with feedback and they get the results. These are the dream clients that I want to talk about. What is your dream client? You need to define it. Step one is defining your dream client. And I want, to, I want you to know what, what is or her frustrations, fears, aspirations, and needs. So if you really spend some time defining these things, when step two is very easy. Step two, just create content about that, right? The super difficult content strategy. Assuming you ignore vanity metrics, you forget about what is the best way to do a video, a carousel, a reel, or whatever. Just, just do whatever feels good to you, but it's also in line with the people you want to talk to. If you apply this, the result is that you're going to be very specific. Your messaging is going to be very specific. And when you are specific, many people will not understand what you're talking about. They, do, they would not relate to you. And that's okay. Because we only want to talk with the dream client section of your audience. You will attract less people. You will see less views on your videos. And it's, I know it's contrary to every, everything that you've heard before, that you've got to grow, you need to have more views, you need to get discovered, but I believe it's counterproductive. I think if you really create content for a specific type of people, the right amount of people will, will be attracted to you. So you gain less people, but higher quality. The great thing about doing content like this is that you don't have to rack your head around on how to make it engaging or entertaining. Maybe doing things that you don't really want to do, like dressing up like crazy just to have a hook for people to stay three seconds longer. That's madness. Have you seen this trend on Instagram lately where they show you a few seconds of something crazy and then somebody comes in and start talking? At that moment, don't you feel annoyed that they had to trick you to pay attention. Like, if I'm saying something to somebody, I want that to be the hook. I don't want anybody else to stay if they're not interested. I want the right people to stay because they're interested in le learning something new and they are giving me full attention. That's your hook. You don't need B-rolls or engagement or a crazy video production. And the more the right people will watch your videos, the more will be closer to you, closer to buy from you as well. The outcome of doing this is that, like I said before, you attract more of the right people. You will gain inbound qualified leads, people reaching out to you in the DMs and saying, hey, I've seen this video, that really resonated with me, how do we work together? And you'll find that you don't even need to have call to actions in the videos because you've, you've been speaking specifically to somebody that will, you made them feel like you understand them. You have serious watchers already sold on you, your method, and we'll, we'll get into details about the type of content that you can create and how all this works. I wanna make you change the way you think about content. I want you to stop, please, believing that the more you grow on social media, the better your business will be because it's not the case. I have known creators that had half a million, a million subscribers, and they were incredibly broke because they felt abused about their audience. They, they were exhausted in the content creation. They couldn't really come up with an offer that made sense for their audience because everything they did was just trying to give out for free without a plan on how to make it sustainable and even enjoyable for them. The second pillar is called 
nurture. And nurture meaning that people that have just met us are not going to be ready to buy from us. There are many other steps before that to, to accomplish. That's why we need to nurture them. The worst way for you to nurture your audience is this, or what, let's call it the old way. The old way is just thinking about transactions. Once you're, uh, you've, you, you get discovered on social media, you move people to your opt-in page, you get them to give their name and email, and then you think about what's the direct ROI for it, so your next step is to how to sell and cross-sell and upsell. Everything revolves around that. Now, if you're doing that, for some markets, it's an incredibly powerful way of making money, and also it's an incredibly powerful way of making people take a decision. Upsell, cross sales, the whole stuff that really, really work for specific niches to specific people at the specific stage of their buying cycle. But if you only think in these terms, like we did, like I did a few years ago, you become a pure marketer that will never be happy because there's never going to be enough volume of views and sales for you to be satisfied. It's a machine that never stops being hungry. And that ties back to the story we had in, uh, in our mastermind when Graham told us, you gotta triple your opt-ins. Can you imagine now, already have been burned out from content creation, having to think about new clever ways of getting viral videos and find where the, the best time to slot in a call to action for people to jump on a website, sign in for something else and let the cycle continues. That's when we said, this thing has got to stop. There's no way we can treat our people like ATM machines, building out lists of random people just in the hope that one day they'll buy. And of course they will buy at some point because this marketing stuff is really powerful. But is that, it, that, that wasn't the way we wanted to run our business as well. We wanted our business to become a slot machine, a numbers game. So we wanted to feel more authentic. We wanted to do something differently. Because if you, if you do it this way, the problem is that you're focused on just the metrics of what makes you money, the opt-ins, the, the sales, and then you end up creating the sales email sequences that you call nurture that really are sometimes manipulation. And you don't want to do that. Why would you want to do that? Because once you've exhausted the goodwill of somebody stepping into your ecosystem, they're gone. They're gone forever, they're never coming back. The outcome of this old way of doing things is, yes, you will grow your list. If you have a ton of viral videos that push people to download the free resource, you'll grow your email list like crazy. Uh, but the problem is that you'll be in the chase of new sales every single month. You'll be in cost and promotion every single month. And for the promotions to work, you need to create a new funnel, a new offer, a new different pages to connect to each other for that specific offer. And then after a while, you exhaust your audience, which will basically start unsubscribing from your email list and from your social media because everything you do is just pushing people to your website. There is a better way to do it and uh, it's a much less stressful way. The new way to do nurturing is just focusing on building the know, like, and trust factor, which we've heard a million times, but we want to be specific on how we do that. We've had people reaching out to us, not from videos that we thought they were the one that would generate the most ROI, the ones that had the, the catchy hook, then the call to action to a specific funnel and all of that. We were thinking about automations, in terms of funnels, in terms of ROI. But when you focus your energies into just helping people the best way you can, of course, with strategy, we'll get deeper into that in a second. But when your heart is into serving mainly, that's when you shine, that's when you speak from the heart, that's when your energy is overwhelming and people just cannot help but saying, this person is amazing. I think she or he understands me. Now I want to be closer. 
So I either buy a course, or I buy a coaching program, or I get into their mastermind. We've had people buying from us for no specific reason, just because they wanted to be closer to us. This is what happens when you build a brand that serves people. And of course, you'll need call to actions, and we'll get into this in a second, but it's not going to be only about that. And I think I'm compelled to do this video mainly because I've been one of those that was focusing on the funnels, on the offers, on the opt-ins, and I had enough of it. And I tell you, this new way feels and works much better. Okay, how do we implement this? Relationships take time and that's okay. We cannot force that. Many marketers have tried to do so, but now 2024, 2025, I think we've had enough of traditional marketing and things have to change. People have become way smarter and they can smell a sales pitch miles away. Now, it doesn't mean that you will never have a sales pitch in your life, but what I mean is that you need to change your perspective into what sales really means. And if you really want to sell something to somebody, there's not just the offer and the pitch that matters. People don't buy stuff, really. They buy status, but mainly when we talk about coaching and services, they buy people. So the four main types of content that will get people sold on you and what you do is content that speaks about you. So what's your story? Like, why do you know all the things you know? Like, what kind of pitfalls you've, you've fallen into? What, what, what the, were the problems and how you came out of it? What, what was your upbringing? What is your point of view about stuff? What do you hate? What do you love? This is not selling anything. Like, this is just sharing from the heart who you are. Because we are humans. And now with AI and anything can be faked, we crave human interaction. And I don't have, I don't have many friends, so I can say it sincerely. Like, honestly, it's very difficult to find people that you can share things you have in common. In the online business, there's so much craziness out there that you don't believe any, anyone anymore. I don't believe anyone anymore. But because we are BS detectors, we know when somebody's genuine. And if you share your story, people will relate to you and they'll get closer to wanting to be with you in terms of, you know, professionally. They will want to buy from you or a coaching program or whatever you have to offer. But also, that's not enough. They need to know your solution is right for them. So you need to share your method, like I'm doing right now. I'm sharing our method. So that once they've sold on you as a person, they, you have values that are aligned with each other, then they need to know, okay, now emotionally we're there. I think we could be friends. Let, let me see if what you offer applies to me, if we are a good fit, if it works, if I think this new opportunity makes sense for me. And that's when you need to create content that explains your method. You can go bird eye view, you can go deeper into a specific topic. That's your method. But you also want to share how effective your method is. So you want to share what you've done, what you've accomplished, the results you've uh, produced for your clients or the results that you produce for you as long as there is some credibility attached to what you're saying. And also, you got to create content that invites people to take some kind of action to you. Now, this should not be the only type of content you create, because otherwise you become a spammer. But once people find you, they, let's say, fall in love with you, they understand your method, they are in line, they need to know what step they need to take to get into your ecosystem to get access to your next service. It might be a free workshop, it might be a paid workshop, it might be a free resource that you have or a paid resource that you have on your website. It might be a Facebook group, a private group, a school group. What is the best first step that you can direct people to to start getting closer to you? That's the type of content that you need, the four type of content. They sell about you, they sell your method, they show your results and that invites people to Take action with you. That's it. You do this with long form content. That's how people get deeper relationships with other people, spending time together. And there's no way just by 
flooding the internet with very superficial short form content like reels or shorts, you can really impact anyone. So you need to go deeper and you do that with long form content. Long form content does not only mean video. Of course, YouTube works amazingly and I personally love YouTube. I'm enjoying recording this video because I'm sharing my heart with you. But if you are not much of a video creator and you are more like a writer, blogs or long posts, that's the way to go. Don't confine yourself. Listen, if this thing is not pleasing for you, it's not fun, it's not gonna work. You're gonna come across like somebody that can't be bothered to do this and, and people can feel that because your energy is as important as what you are saying. Long form content as well is your email list, your email subscribers, you wanna keep them updated with what you do, sending them more resources and all these four type of content as well. The more you do this, the more your content will sell for you. You don't have to jump on Zoom calls explaining your life story, your method and doing all of the report, building the report and actually pitch your services. Your content has already done that for you. That's why I don't take any sales calls anymore. If I do, I take them because I want to actually get in contact with people because I want to share, I want to coach. My sales calls are not salesy. I coach people in my sales calls. And at the end of, at the end of them, I don't have any objections. I don't have any frustrations in having to pitch anything. Usually people just want to work with me or not. And that's totally fine. With this content, you will reject the wrong people automatically. You will not need complicated funnels because if you do this for long enough, people will just start, well, assuming you gave them the ways to contact you, they'll start contacting you in DMs or maybe if you have an application form on your website, that's another way. As long as you do this with the heart in the right place and people can feel it, then everything else is just making sure that your message is clear, is tailored to your ideal, ideal client, that you speak from the heart and you just create the best content that is fun for you and useful to your ideal client. Our third and final pillar is juicy because it's called impact. And impact, it's all about what you offer, how you offer it, and the type of results you produce for your clients. This pillar is very dear to me because we've been struggling with offers for years. Um, everybody's in their own journey and at the beginning we didn't know how to create an offer we didn't know what an offer was and we kept creating small products here and there that we ended up having to connect back together to make sense of everything it was very very difficult so if you are feeling like you're creating courses for every question that you get asked or if you don't think you can charge a ticket if you don't have a membership because you think it's going to be a lot of more work, this is not true. And there is a way to simplify your business if you really are able to put some boundaries in what you want to tolerate in life. And for us, I could not tolerate having to build a new product and a new offer every single month. I cannot tolerate that I didn't know which offer I should promote in which month. I do not tolerate that I would wake up in the morning feeling overwhelmed, stressed, and stretched. My effort would be diluted to promote which offer today? The one that we did last month, the, the one that we did this month, the one that we did last year. Oh, there'd be like another landing page, another sales page, and then a thank you page, and an opt-in page, and a delivery page. This is why you need team. This is why you need to work so much to make a business work. And I don't tolerate that anymore. So the old way is exactly what I described. The old way is having these disjointed offers, multitude of funnels, low ticket to high ticket confusions. Because if you start low ticket, you think, oh, I need a high ticket. And if you only have high ticket and not selling as much, you think you need low ticket. And you start adding these offers and you lose track of what you're doing. And your business is a mess and then you end up hiring random coaches because you think you need branding. You don't need a new strategy. You just need to simplify what you have. But the problem is for us, when we had the system, is that we, we had so many low ticket offers. We had many funnels to maintain. 
We needed to keep the opt-in flow incredibly high because we had so many low ticket offers and we needed many, many sales every single month. Needless to say, it was unpredictable the results that we would get. And the main crucial problem was that we didn't have enough profit margin because in order to sustain this monster, we had to work 24 seven ourselves, plus having team members helping us out. And we had to manage that too. On top of that, we need the software to manage the team and making sure the tasks were done correctly and on time. We needed agencies to edit videos, people to manage social media and dealing with other people, combining all the elements for, for the social media to actually get produced and released at the right time. It was a mess. Enough with that. The new way of creating offers and giving the best results to your clients possible is just simplifying everything. We've, we had to be ruthless. We had to say, you know what, let's kill all of the offers that don't feel aligned with us. And that's one of the most scary things because you don't want to let go of what you know is going to give you money. It's going to make you pay the bills this month. But once you start accepting that you are way more than what you confined yourself to be, you can get clever with this. And there's something called proximity offers that I'm going to explain in a second. The trick here is to have mainly one core offer that ideally is a high ticket. And it's called proximity offers because you can decide how far away or how close to you a person can be. And based on that, it's a different price. So if you craft everything around one single offer. For instance, we have a coaching program where we help people apply all of this. You could do it one-to-one -one, and in the future, in the future you'll be able to do exactly the same journey but without the one-to-one -one support by having a community instead. It's exactly the same offer. The delivery for us is the same. We just need to add one group call in the middle of a journey and but that's the same, it's the same product that we're delivering. We know that we love teaching that stuff. We love supporting people one-to-one -one and on group coaching. It's fun for us. It's impactful for our clients because that's exactly what they need. Win-win. Then the low ticket side comes in when you want to launch it, when you want to grab new people, attract new people into your offers. You do it with low ticket workshops. And we can go deeper into this strategy in another video, but this is basically it. Having just the simplest offer ever, have a high ticket offer that is close to you, a community that is mid ticket and launch it with low ticket products. If you do this, your life would be 100 times simpler. It's going to be fun for you to deliver your product because that's literally the only product you have to deliver. You're not going to feel spread out. This way you can stack monthly recovering revenue and create wait list at the same time to create demand. So that every time you have a new launch, you want to gain new people in your offers, you have a wait list already ready so you don't have to be attached to monthly sales like, like we did before. You will have way higher profit margins which will allow you to be the best coach for your clients. You can give the best level of service because money is not in the way, complexity is not in the way, and the only thing that, ma that remains is you trying to think of the best way to serve your people, which is if you're a coach dedicated to serve people, it's the best feeling ever. This way people will stay with you for longer and pay you for years, not just for a month worth of whatever service, and they can refer to you more people, and everything you learn from this side you can feed it back into your content that's gonna be better and better and it becomes a beautiful cycle that generates even more goodwill, it builds your brand and your life will change because of it. Now let me share a couple of case studies to show you that this method works. For example, Alberto. Alberto is an incredible human being. He was an ex-obese 
and he managed to completely transform his physique and now he's helping people with body recomposition. After working with us, he managed to increase his prices, help more than 50 people in 2023 alone with an offer of around $1,000. And meet Sarah. She's also an amazing human being. She helps first responder and military veterans regain their mental health. And she's been doing tracks in the Himalaya and she's been struggling to sell those. And after working with us, she sold out in every track that she managed to put together. Because they were selling so well, she also managed to have more tracks in a year to bring people to Nepal with her and it's been an amazing journey seeing her grow. Even Aiko crushing it on social media but she didn't really have a sales page to sell in autopilot and then when we started working with her about her messaging and her sales page she put together an amazing sales page that started selling for her. I actually have a very nice sales page now because of your help. Um, yeah good. <laughs> It's working by itself. <laughs> That's amazing. The, the page is just sitting there and <laughs> attracting new clients. And then there's Linda, which she didn't have any following on social media whatsoever, but she managed to uh, work on her messaging with us. And in the first month of publishing content on social media, she managed to, to gain 740 new leads in just about a month. And, and now she's ready to launch her program, which is insane. I mean, this stuff really, really works. Okay, we covered a lot of ground and I really hope the three pillars and the results and my stories were all making sense to you. They were relatable to some extent because that's been our journey since 2016. And for me and Alessia now, it's the most incredible thing is helping people avoid those mistakes we see so many creators out there trying to make it whatever make it means for them and the old way of doing things is not sustainable anymore and i'm sure you have realized it by now putting in practice the three pillars it's simple in practice but it requires a big mindset shift on your side that's really the only hard part everything else is just mechanics and that's easy are you ready to change your business, to simplify it, and maybe let go of things that are not serving you. When you really start putting boundaries on what you want to tolerate in your life, and you start putting yourself first, putting your sanity first, and your service to others first, then your business has got to obey. Your business needs to fall in line to serve what you want in life. Not you having to bend over backwards for your business to grow at all costs. What is the point of that? I mean, if you want that and you feel like the energy is in uh, hustling and grinding and build a business that is bigger than life and just go for it. Just follow your guts. I'm not telling you to do what I say. I'm just sharing what's been useful for me and Alessia for the past years. We wouldn't go back. And now we want to help you achieve that if you are in the face of change if you want to if you need to simplify your business because you can't take it anymore and you know you have a gold mine in your niche but you don't know exactly how to get out of it because it's too complex you feel too overwhelmed and too stretched let's simplify it together if you want to work closer with Alessia and I on this three pillars and applying it to your business just follow the link in the description below we'll lead you to a page where you can apply and see if we are a good fit. We might end up chatting on Instagram on Facebook or maybe on a Zoom call, it doesn't matter. There is no pressure whatsoever. The only thing you want to do is to help. If you're ready, click in the link in the description box below and we'll go from there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.